Good morning, good morning. We are here. It's a beautiful day here in San Antonio, Texas, a little bit on the cold side. And I'm excited about this video that we have here today because Jason Brown is with us from uh, Brown Stone Home Solutions. And we are going to be talking about a subject that isn't discussed very, very much. This is a video that you definitely are going to want to watch, but not just once, multiple times because Jason is going to show you how you take big data, like lists, how long are these lists? Uh, for Bear County, you've got a million records. For Tarrant County, a million, a million records, and then narrowing it down to a select few, maybe even a couple hundred, a thousand, or a couple thousand, to where you're marketing specifically towards the leads that are going to give you the highest potential to agreeing to a price point and be in the deal. So very precise, high precision marketing here. So Jason, welcome. I know we've done some uh, videos in the past. Can you do a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about yourself and who you are? Quick synopsis. Yeah, so I've been an investor for about 20 years or so, and uh, I'm also an ex-Microsoft, ex-Apple, so I've worked in tech and done a lot of side hustle deals. You, you hit all the major tech companies. Yeah, hit all the, yeah, it's like a crawl, like a, like a tech crawl. There you go. Say. And, um, you know, over the past several years, at least 10 years plus, I've developed a series of automation tools and programs that help automate my life and my business. And so one of the ones that I built last year when I started my wholesaling company was the tax delinquent, list cleaner, scrubber, analyzer, formatter, all of the above. And uh, when I was investigating VAs on Upwork and Fiverr, I could not find anyone who had the uh, experience that I needed um, for me to take the time to explain exactly what I wanted, how I wanted things formatted, how I wanted things filtered. It would be easier for me as a software developer to build it myself, roll my own solution, because I know as an investor what I'm looking for, as a marketer what I'm looking for, and as a data geek what I'm looking for. So I've recently made these services available to other investors, and in this session we're going to talk about how I've used my tool to create highly, highly micro-targeted marketing lists of distressed owners in the tax delinquent world. Okay, so... Just to kind of go over this again, good morning, everybody. We have a few people watching. Mike, Keith, Melanie, thank you for jumping in. Keith, it was great seeing you the other day. Um, I'm really excited about this video because it's very easy when you're first getting into wholesaling but also investing that you um, look for those standard ways of generating leads. You know, what's commonly talked about is bandit signs. What's commonly talked about is door knocking. Uh, what's commonly talked about is cold calling. And all these uh, techniques and strategies definitely do work. But one of the uh, strong categories is, um, is uh, skip tracing and direct mail. And the, what a lot of people do is they just do kind of a shotgun approach. So they might go to a website like lists, uh, listsource.com. Let's see if we can get audio a little bit better. They'll go to uh, listsource.com, something like that, mm -hmm. and they'll try and just get a list. They guess a few different filters that that company might or that website might provide. They mm -hmm. try and do the best that they can, and then there's a shotgun approach, and there's a lot of return mail, and there's a lot of dead money that's just being sent out there with hopes of getting a lead or a potential deal. Mm -hmm. Whereas you kind of looked at it from the front end with, hey, if I'm going to be spending money on marketing, how can I make sure that the dollar that I am spending is going to be going the furthest because I am sending either mailers or skip tracing to the highest potential motivated leads using resources of technology and looking at the data itself to direct you to where you need to direct your money. Yeah, and I personally have a trust issue with third-party vendors. I don't know how old their data is. I don't know what kind of algorithms they're doing. I don't know what kind of backtesting they've done with their data. I want directly from the source, from the county, the original, unmodified virgin data that I can manipulate to my heart's content to get what I want. And all those other list companies, they have their value, they have their purpose. What I built on these tools is a way to augment my other types of hunting. I don't want a shotgun approach, I want a sniper approach. And so that's pretty much what I've done. I've taken a year's worth of pain points as a wholesale and marketer, put all those solutions into my tax bot so that I can run this thing and in less than a minute, uh, depending on the county, or in less than an hour, you know, it automates 11 million records down to 1,000, a 
million records down to 300, depending on my selection criteria. And I don't have to rehire somebody, retrain them. I don't, I don't have to manually do it. I press a button. You, you like the computers. I, I like Keith's comment, which is what you were saying, which is taking the sniper approach compared to the shotgun approach. And both can work, but if you got a sniper rifle, you can be very deadly and very efficient. And I know you're also a gamer too. So when you play you. when you play first person shooters, were you also did you go towards the shotgun or the sniper? Um, I went toward the cloaking device and the, <laughs> and the sniper rifle. Okay, I played a lot of um, was it uh, Blood Gulch? I think it was. Yeah, like Halo Gulch. Capture the Flag. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, when, when I was working at Microsoft Games, I got a sneak peek at Halo for PC. Oh, that must have been so awesome. I, I got to play all kinds of games in months or years before they even came out to the public. And we would have lots of, just as an aside, beer and pizza Fridays playing Capture the Flag Halo. After oh, the yeah. Network. Blood Gulch and Sidewinder. Played oh, tons of wonderful, tons of wonderful stuff. stuff. So you, I may sprinkle some gamer <laughs> references into my presentations because this is like part of my gamer's guide to real estate success. Totally. You know, totally. There's a lot of corollaries. So you're a sniper in the, in the digital world when it comes to data, but also in the virtual world when it comes to gaming, too. So I, I feel you. Okay, so um, Miguel, Jennifer, thank you for jumping in and watching this. Okay, so me at Hilco, we do a lot of content. We put a lot of podcasts out there, a lot of videos, Facebook Lives like this one. I'm, I'm especially excited about this video because this is a topic. Hey, hey, Rod, I appreciate you jumping in. This is a topic that is not discussed very frequently and never really discussed in high detail like Jason's about to do in, in a few minutes. So please, I don't ask for very much. I try and put a lot of content out. But please, if there was a video that you could share and give the likes to and the comments and things like that, please share this video because this content is going to be out of this world. I think this will be mind-boggling for a lot of you because it's not something that's discussed or talked about because quite honestly, the people that have figured this out don't like sharing this type of information. And Jason's really going to go into the nitty-gritty and in fact... He's going to give you a free Excel with some of the tools that he's going to show in just a minute as well for uh, everybody that's listening. And we're going to show you how, or we're going to tell you how you can get access to that as well. So please, if you've loved anything that we've put out there, if you've gotten any value from Hilco Homes, please share this video. I would highly appreciate it. So, Jason, you ready to get into it? Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to switch over to Jason's computer here, and he's going to show us He's going to show us uh, the the magic, the magic, magic here. So, okay, so what are we looking at? What uh, is this? So there are there are three windows I'm going to share during this meeting session. This first window is the TRW layout file that comes included from Bear, Tarrant, Harris, uh, certain counties in Texas that provide this, and this will show you what you need to show your developer. Okay, hold on, timeouts. So let's take a step back. So this list is what list? This is the tax delinquent list for okay. the county. So what does tax delinquent mean exactly? Tax delinquent means a homeowner who has not been paying on their property tax, whether for the current year or prior year. So okay. they're late in some degree in making payments. Making payments to the county. To the county. And, on their and so the county clearly is keeping record of who owes them money, yes. right? And this, uh, this data is public information. That's free and accessible. Depending on the state. Some states have more strength and privacy laws than others. Texas, uh, luckily for us, Texas investors, we have access to this data pretty easily from the counties. Hey, Gustavo, Ricky, thank you for jumping in. And if you're in Texas, can we get some Texas love in here? Maybe some cowboy hats or mm -hmm. is there like a, a beer or a steak emoji? Throw some of that Texas love in here. So Texas, they're open with their data. They allow for you to, uh, as a public... Uh, to be able to access this information. Much easier than others. Okay. There are other states, uh, perhaps in Michigan, in South Carolina, and whatnot, that might provide a PDF with very complex layouts that um, Python scripts and C-sharp scripts can't easily make sense of. Um, or they may not provide it at all or take forever uh, with a Freedom of Information request. Okay. Uh, so if you're in Texas, you're in luck because it's easily manipulated in text format you can convert to spreadsheets, CSVs, and other things. That Gustavo just said, Texas born and raised. Hey, man, I feel you. Not everybody was born here, but I know there's a lot of Texans that uh, got here as soon as they could. So, uh, all right, so what's going to happen here? And by the way, everybody watching, he's going to go into some very technical items. 
uh, very specific to items. Uh, if you have questions, this is your opportunity while we have Jason's available to uh, go over it, to answer specific questions, take advantage of answering or asking questions so we can go over it. Yeah. So uh, you go to your county, you physically go down there, go down to the courthouse and say, make a request, a freedom of information request. You're looking for uh, the public data on the tax delinquent uh, data for that county. They're going to give you what? What do they give you? So my understanding is I haven't done this personally. I've had my partners do this. They go down to the tax office and they request a tax delinquent list CD or electronic file that they can FTP from the county website. So a physical CD or it's some sort of uh, downloadable file. They give you like a link or something. Yeah, and you typically need to fill out on a piece of paper your name, the purpose of the request, and what you're requesting for the records. Okay. And then they usually have a 24 to 48 hour-ish turnaround, depending on their IT department staff. Yeah, and the county itself and everything else. Okay, yeah. so then they're going to give you this, and uh, some counties, like you said, give you that electronic file, you might get a CD, and then this is one of the files that might be on that This CD. is one of four what files. looking at on yeah. the screen. Yeah, so for example, for Bear County, they'll give you a zip file. And it's going to have four files in there, and one of them is this TRW file layout. This explains what the different fields in the text file mean, like the name, the account, the year, the jurisdiction. There's a position, start, length, and um, you know a type, whether it's character, numeric. This is useful for your software developer that's going to do their custom file format conversion for you. So this basically is labeling what the data is in a separate file. Yes. So you, you're going to get like a separate file that's like an Excel. Uh, it's a text file. A text file. And so then you take the text file and you're also going to look at what we have on the screen. And what you have on the screen is going to help you determine what the text, style, the text file is saying as far as the data. So, hey, one data field might be the year. Uh, whereas another data field might be uh, homestead information. Right. And now it, would, it would take a couple minutes to open up, maybe 30 seconds or so, to open up the actual file. And I'm not going to do that in this uh, podcast. Uh, but just to rest assured that you need to have somebody who's technically proficient to do this. And one of the reasons why tax delinquents are a, a gold mine is it's one of the most technical types of analysis and hunting you can do. And it intimidates a lot of investors, and so they skip it, and they just do probates and foreclosures and other things, which are fine. But if you take the extra effort to master this information, you will have a significant market advantage than your other competitors. Or hire somebody that does do it for you. Exactly. And I want to point out, Keith, I love the beer emoji, and Charlie, the cowboy hat, uh, nicely done. Represent, represent. Okay. So we have this, you get this, this is showing us w what the data means in the text file, mm -hmm. then what happens? So then what happens is, I can explain how I do it on my end. So I've taken a year to develop a set of tools that will convert the TRW file, this is what they call it. The, the, the TRW file is what's on the screen. Yes, and convert that into a spreadsheet format and it will add custom columns that allow me to further add criteria and filter out the types of leads I want, such as owner type, LLCs, mom and pop, owner occupied, how much they owe, what hot zip codes they're in, to get a very finite list of 900 or 1200 leads that I can pound every single month instead of 14,000 or 25,000. Okay, so uh, Jennifer, thank you for watching. She said that that was golden already. I mean, we're only 13 minutes in and already dropping golden nuggets. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. And then we have Andrew who's saying good morning. Andrew, it's good to see you at the event, by the way. Thank you for watching. And again, uh, people, definitely add, drop your questions in the comment section. Please share this video. This is an awesome video that a lot of people can get a lot of value from, and I would love for it to get out into the world and help more people. Mm -hmm. So with what you just said, Jason, basically you take this information and all the data that you got, and you're putting it into an Excel document in Excel uh, format, and the reason you're doing that is so that you can manipulate the data, start filtering the data in the way that you can start making sense of it and start seeing patterns mm -hmm. or uh, anomalies or, or just make sense of the data so you know what's important and what may not be important. I'm looking for narratives. There's no one specific column that tells me everything I need to know. I need to take a series of information and then make a decision based on what I'm seeing, what the story is with this batch of leads, what do I want to do with it? I and love so, that, how you phrase that, a narrative. You're looking for the story. Mm -hmm. Looking yeah. for the story. Yeah. All right, so what, what does the Excel look like? So the Excel sheet looks like this. 
and I'm going to start all the way over to the far right, and I'll explain every single thing. Don't worry. So, so okay, and before you go into it, how you mentioned earlier, how many leads are we starting off with in this state? Okay, you, you're, so you're starting with, okay, technically, even though there's about a million records in the TRW file, each record is, is duplicated five times because there's usually four to five different jurisdictions that this particular property is a part of, uh, school district, hospital district, whatever that is. This is specific to Bear, specific to Tarrant, Denton, and Collin, maybe Harris as well. Not necessarily with other counties because everyone's different. There's no standard to this. But I've learned, at least for Bear, I need to not only remove the duplicates but analyze every single property to see how much do they owe for each year so that I can track how many years late they are and exactly which years they are. So you're starting with over a million potential uh, yeah. data set here. A million data set for Bear County. And then as I show here in this example, one of my dials that I use to analyze what I want to do with the data is analyze how many years late they are and how many total years late they are so I can sort that and then quickly scroll down and get a sense of how many people are 30 years late, 20 years late, 8 years late, whatnot. And my bread and butter starts at 2 years later or more. What? Okay, so this is great, and I really love this. So basically what you're looking at is you're looking at each property, and you're saying, okay, which years and how many years is that particular homeowner of that property laid on that they have not paid their taxes? They have not paid their and taxes. Why would that be relevant? Why would you want to know if they're only late 2017 compared to some of these I'm seeing back to the 90s? Why would that be important? So owners that have recently become distressed who are one year late, two year late, three year late, that's the critical time frame in which you determine hey, this person must have lost a job, maybe they had a medical expense, or they had a divorce, there's a death in the family, there's something going on where recently, now they're not able to make payments on their taxes. And this is a good early indicator of financial distress. And this is something you can't determine in a foreclosure list or a probate list. You don't know what their situation is, but there is a situation. And uh, when I look in here, for example, at, uh, let's take a look at somebody from 2012 and 2013. We're at row, you know, 5788. So 5,780 plus properties are at well, least two years. Well, that's strange. Why would it be just 2012 mm -hmm. and 2013 and not the subsequent? We don't know, but we can make a general guess that in general, they've been good about making payments on their taxes. But maybe these years they either encountered a medical situation, a divorce, something. So it's like a revolving balance that's hanging it's over It's a revolving balance. Like they haven't paid. There's still penalties and interest still accruing. So I've added up all the amounts due for the years they haven't paid, and it's telling me there's $2,457 uh, for this particular owner. And then what I can do is, because I have the account number in my spreadsheet, I can look that account up specifically in the Bear County Tax Assessor's website and look at the story. And I will do this maybe between three and five random. I will pick out to kind of see what's going on. And what I'll find is this is an estimate. Um, the county sometimes has incorrect data, sometimes the data entry is wrong, sometimes they see a name with a typo or something. But I can I can rest assured that they will probably be owing at least 40, this 2457 and since this data that I'm showing you is from last fall, there's going to be another couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars more in, in penalties. So if, um, if we want, I can take this account right here, I'll take that right there, and then we will go into... Bear County, and I actually have a favorites, quick little nugget you want to put into your bookmarks, all of your favorites for your analysis. So Bear County Tax Office, I go here, I go into my account number, I paste it there, I click search. And if it didn't find it, then I put in a zero, and hopefully this will work. And there we go. Click on the account number, I take so, a look. Really quick, to get to this website, by the way, um, this is Bear County. You can mm -hmm. go to the county website, and, and Bear, it's bear.org. And then when you go there, it's going uh, on the top portion of the website. There's like a government tab drop down. And what you're looking for is a tax assessor uh, yeah. uh, drop down. And then that'll lead you to this website, which is a tax assessor website. And then you can start searching properties individually, which so, is what he just did. So what I just did was I showed you go to the property tax section right here. There's going to be a drop down. You click property tax search. And then you can search by owner name, property address, or account number. And so... I typically do account number, so that way um, I don't have to select and get the right street address 
And it looks like we have a, a quick question here. Keith said, what if you see that partial payments have been made like $100 and they are homestead? Yeah. So there will be different types of exemptions that you see here. And I also have exemptions that I've listed in my specific spreadsheet as well down in here. And these exemptions mean different things. So if you're over 65 or disabled, you might be exempt from making uh, tax payments that would result in a uh, foreclosure. But if you don't make your payments, you're still having penalties and interest still accruing that's eating into your equity. But you might find a lot of homeowners who are older who don't care about selling their house. And they say, I'm going to die in my house. I don't want to sell it. And so they're not really motivated. But you know there's deferred maintenance going on. They, they're having trouble making their payments because they're usually on a fixed Social Security income. There's only so much they can do. And taxes are usually going to be low on the totem pole if they know they're not going to be penalized for it, thrown out on the street. Um, okay, and then Charlie had a great comment, uh, which was, I have this list, and I've been trying to figure out which specific people to target. So, Charlie, this video, this Facebook Live is for you and everybody right. like you. So, this is you're going to see how Jason actually does it. Right. So, you actually search... Um, for this particular property by account number, but you could have done it by address in a few different ways. And you landed here, which is basically information on their property, and you're looking for the red, which says total amount due. This is the amount of taxes that they are behind on. This is the amount they're behind on, arrears, penalties, and interest. And when you look at what my spreadsheet showed on, on that example, I think it was like 2400 something. Right. Um, it's a lot more now. So I use this as an indicator, not as the end-all, Bible, be-all. It, it, it tells me one part of the story, they're late. And so one of the filters that I do is they owe at least $1,000 or more. Um, or I could say, oh, 5000 or more. But I can sort it in my spreadsheet because I've already done the analysis in the back end, behind the scenes in my, in my tool. And my tool is spitting out a bunch of really cool outputs so that I can then take and do further filtering to take... 14,000 mom and pop owner occupied and get that down to a thousand mom and pop owner occupied that meet a certain set of criteria, which I'll walk through in the next 20 minutes. Hey, Mark, I appreciate you watching and it was great seeing you at the event. Thank you for saying hi and, and, and uh, you know, coming and saying hi in person. It's always great seeing you. And we got probably about 20 or maybe 25 minutes left on this particular video. So okay. what are some other important uh, components of the Excel that you look for? One of them was how many years late. And I think that's really important because you might not want to be mailing to people that are only one year late. They just might have forgot. And, right. uh, you know, their motivation is not likely to be high because if anyone's going to be paying off the taxes that are due, the highest majority of people that are going to do that are the people that are one year late. So yeah. him looking at multiple years might be the approach that you want to, that you so want to take. There are other things that I look for and my major dials have to do with the owner type. I do some advanced owner analysis in my bot that spits out true or false statements uh, into uh, columns that I can then easily set in my filters. Uh, when I go into data uh, and, I, and I can do an auto filter, that's going to take my columns and give them a little bar. And you see that the true is missing because I've already filtered those out. And put that so this list. These, are these yellow columns the ones that you built that specific formulas for? Yes. Okay, yes. so these yellow columns are all specific filters that you're looking for. Yes. What are, what are these columns? What are some of these filters? So estates are um, typically when, when the owner has passed and the, and the property has gone to an estate, and now the estate is the owner on title, on record. And so I want to do a series of certain keyword searches for estates so that I can decide if I want to include those in my marketing or not. If you're cold calling, I skip them. If you're cold calling trusts, skip them. They're hard to find and hard to track. You want mom and pops like John Smith, Jane Doe. You don't want entities. You're gonna to have to have figure out who the registered agent is and, and uh, all that kind of stuff, at least for cold calls. If you're doing mailers, then it's a different story. And this spreadsheet format that I've built out for myself is tailored for mail merge and highly directed mailers, postcards and whatnot. You can still use it for cold calling because I split out the first and the last name over here um, so that you can do some searches over there. But I'm focused more here on the filters than the, than the actual name formatting. So just by setting these to a certain value, false, is a state false, is trust false, is entity false, Setting those three things immediately cuts down 14,000 leads down to a couple thousand. Then, you know, as you see here, they're 14,960 out of a million. Um, so now I've got 14,960 total mom and pop 
owner occupied because that's one of my other formulas here. Is owner oct true or false? This is one of the formulas I'm going to give you for free uh, later on in the podcast. The exemptions description is not something I use as a filter, but I use it as, as, a, uh, as a narrative that I quickly sort and see everyone who's disabled homestead, who's homestead, who's over 65, and who has no exemptions. I, all right, we have another quick question here. Gustavo said, what if the owner of the house passed away mm-hmm. and they didn't leave, it, leave the property to a spouse, kids, or had a will mm-hmm. and didn't pay his or her delinquent taxes? Fun stuff. Then it goes into state because um, you can't even probate that if you don't have a will. So I believe the state assigned somebody. I don't know exactly. Talk to a real estate attorney. Uh, I'm not giving legal advice on this, but my general sense is you've got a little extra work to do to track down who the uh, state appointed executor is or you yeah, know, if so executor is the right word when there's no will. When somebody passes away and there's uh, not a will, there's a particular order in which ownership can be um, transferred. And there's the also ownership is kind of split up amongst the particular family members, um, oh. and depending on kind of how things are set up. If there was siblings, if there was multiple uh, children, uh, basically what you have to do is get an affidavit airship to go through the probate process to see who the owner is, uh, or who has ownership, or who there might be multiple owners that have to sign off, and those would be the people that you need to get an agreement with and have them you know do the sale to you. So you'll have to do a little bit more homework. Typically, the way you approach that is just get one person to agree to sign to you, get a contract signed, open up title, and then have title guide you through that process. And funny enough, Hilfa Homes has a title and contracts course where we talk a lot about that stuff. So that might be something that we can help you with. Yeah. I want to get over quickly to the zip code ranking. This is one of my other super um, powerful filters that I use. So I've custom built a data set that takes the last six months non-owner occupied solds on the market. And then I take that data and then I match up the zip code for owner occupied properties. And then I spit out and tell you what the overall ranking is for that county, the number one. Here it's like 78210. Uh, the, how many units sold? How, how is it ranked? How is it's, that- it's ranked on how many houses sold in the last six months. Uh, and I choose non-owner occupied property so that as a wholesaler, if you know that your end buyer is going to be an investor who's not going to be moving in, they're going to be doing something with the property. So this number represents people who are not moving in, the rehabbers or their landlords. And the sold information, does that come in the data set as well? This comes as part of my custom bot work. This does not come from the county. Okay, so this is separate work that you then kind of overlay this data. Yes to then uh, try and find out which areas to focus on. It gives me an indication so that if I want to target the top five and the top ten hottest selling zip codes for non-owner occupieds in in Bear County, that's how I get immediately down to a thousand. You're too smart. You you thought this through. Thought this through. And I want to know, too, percentile. Zip code percent, to me, what this means is the top four percent. This zip code is in the highest performing four percent of the entire area. And so... (laughs) When you go on Bigger Pockets and you look at uh, some of the forums where people are asking me about hot zip codes, this is the insight I got from reading those forums. Top percent of volume? Uh, top percent of volume. Yeah, they say you know the hot zip codes pretty much represent the top 50 to 80 percent of your area is what you want to focus on. And so I wanted to know specifically, well, what does that really mean? What does hot zip code rank 37 mean? Well, top 79 percent. So this is telling me right around this... Part. The top 38 zip codes represents the top 80% of all properties sold in the county in the last six months for non-owner occupiers. But to me, hey, 80%, what's the difference between 79 and 80? I want to know exactly the numbers. I'm a data geek. I need to know. 83 versus 88. So uh, Keith had a question. Property is delinquent on taxes. Owner passed away. However, children have property under the exemptions of the deceased. How would you proceed? Uh, so with situations like that, I basically let the title company tell me what to do. I'll get under contract and uh, open up title. You, it, they might, the children might not be the actual owners, depending on will and other scenarios. Have the title company guide you, and then as far as exemptions, if they've been kind of uh, flying under the radar, typically that stuff comes to light and will need to be paid out of proceeds. But again, the title company is going to guide you in that scenario. Good question, Keith. So if somebody was to start doing this and they want to get this data, we had Charlie earlier that said, man, I have this data and, and I need to understand how to kind of be a little bit more precise. You've shown a few things, but if you were to make a list of, let's say, just a few thousand or really targeted, 
Can you go over again what are the, some, some of the main items you want to look for? Yep. I'm gonna, so this tab here is a perfect example of this. How I got to 1,070 highly micro-targeted leads. So you started with a million, then you filtered down to 15,000. 15, and now this is like a super, super highly sniper scenario where you mm -hmm. target to, you said 1,000? So I wanted to get to 1,000 because most um, investors who have like a $500 budget for mailers, click to mail, 48 cents a postcard, you can, uh, you can afford about 1,000 to 1,100 mailers. So this is the bread and butter for like 80% of the wholesalers out there that usually have around five to $600 in marketing budget per month. Talk about smart money. Smart if, you, money. if you have limited funds and you are trying to put a campaign together so where you can put your money to work and actually have money that comes in from an actual deal, then you clearly want to have smart money out there. And mm -hmm. what better way to have smart money than to have extremely targeted leads that you're going after that not only fit one criteria, but fit a series of criteria so that you can um, you know, have the highest chance of success. So what are some of the criteria here that kind of came to So the criteria that built this list, they are mom and pop, owner-occupied single-family properties. They are at least three years delinquent on taxes. They owe at least $3,000 in outstanding amounts due. And they're in the top 10, I believe I put here, the top 10 hottest zip codes in Bear County. Those five filters got me a thousand. And it looks like there's a ton that are over 65. So these might be older persons mm -hmm. that have a lot of equity or might be looking to downsize or sell or right. you know, have another higher level of motivation. So, so right now I've sorted it by zip code. So you can kind of see here, you know, we got a thousand rows. And just for the top three zip codes alone, you're looking at 270 rows. So you could do more micro-targeting depending on your budget. So just to keep in mind, this is roughly how many was it? 1,300 it looked like? Uh, there, there were 1,070 leads. 1,070. So basically 1,000. And if it costs you 45 cents to send out a, pos a postcard, that's $500 a drop right there. Boom. So now I'm sorting by exemptions just to see who are all my disabled homesteads. And I can see here there are about 244 rows of disabled. So even though they're technically exempt from certain things, they may be tired of the upkeep. They may be ready to move into assisted living or something else. So just because the exemption says something doesn't mean it's not a lead. You just need to be aware of what's going on behind the scenes. And that's just one of numerous filters that it has here. So you're, you're, you're really increasing your chances. Talk about like really sniper, high focus, smart mm -hmm. money going out there. So that's a piece. Then if I want to do further filtering on how much they have outstanding, we got people owing 98000 that are 17 years late, and these are exactly all the years that are late. We want to scroll this all the way down to those who owe 3000 And again, it's up to the client. You know, When I'm doing this type of list cleaning service for clients, they may want 500 and up or 1000 and up, so they have a bigger reach. This is just an example if you have limited marketing funds. This is how you can really, really super target your types of properties. Um, so I can see exactly you know, they owe 3000 or more. All right, so we have Jeremy watching. We have Mark on here. Ometo also, thank you everyone for watching. Mike's on here. Ometo says, always bring value. Totally, you got it right. That's like the mantra to life. So this is amazing. So you just kind of walk through. This is a very bird's eye view of taking a huge data set over a million different files here, or uh, leads here mm -hmm. and then filtering down, filtering down, filtering down to a thousand in this scenario. Mm -hmm. But this is just a series of filters. You have filters that aren't even uh, showing in this particular thousand data set. Mm -hmm. And you're really uh, making it extremely focused to where you're increasing your chances of getting a deal. You need to be uh, looking at ways to be highly targeted. So you also have created an Excel with some of these filters um, that you're giving away for free for the people watching, right? Yes. Can, we, can you show a little bit about that? So there are three formulas that I'm gonna share with you guys today uh, that can have an instant impact in any list. Tax delinquent, foreclosure, probate, anything. Any list. Massive value here. Massive value here. So those of you that are taking the time to watch this, you're getting some great, great nuggets here to apply. So number one, owner occupancy detection. This has to do with comparing the location of the property with the mailing address on record. And so this formula has to do with comparing the values of the two columns and then setting a result true or false. What, what does that mean exactly? 
you have a mailing address and the actual address. Why would they be different? So let's say this is, um, you know, uh, John Smith owns this property on Fannin Street, and he also has the mailing address set to that. That means he's living there. He's The mailing address is the same as the site address that is actually delinquent on the so property tax. So that's likely their personal home. Likely their personal personal home. Compared to if the addresses were different, it might the be an investor. Are different. Like down here, like a P.O. box. You might have a, a P.O. box mailing address. Well, it doesn't match with Rolito Street. In fact, I could put in here 123 Main Street, and it's still false. So I, that basically means it's uh, likely an investor. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, they, your chances of particularly getting that deal or having that conversation, the numbers work out, might not be as high of a chance. So you might want to focus on homesteads compared to investors, or you might be focusing on investors specifically, depending on what you're trying to target. Yeah. If you, I mean, there, there's money in uh, absentee owners, especially if they're out of state absentee owners that are late on their taxes. They may not care about the property. Char Charlie just said, thank you so much. All my questions are being answered. Well, there you go, Charlie. If you have more questions, hit us up. So, so this is Excel. This is one of the filters. One what, filter. What, what, it's, a, it's a formula that you've already built into Excel that people just need to copy and paste yes. the data into, and it will handle it for you. Yes. Them. And the most important thing when you're doing these filters is you want a true or false binary. Yes or no. True or false, so that you can immediately set that to a filter. So if I go into data and I create a filter... What I just did there was I selected my column header and went to data and filter. This is for Google Sheet. I can then set this and I've got two options, true or false. Look at that. As soon as I set that to false only, I check the box on true to make it clear so that I only have false. Now I instantly have all of my non-owner occupied properties with the click of one button. That's how you want to do things, true or false. Awesome, awesome. Next. All right, Anthony, Mark, thank you for jumping in and watching this. If anybody has questions, this is your time. We're going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. So what are some of the other filters in this free Excel that you're going to be giving away to the watchers? LLC detection. Wouldn't you like to know who's an LLC and who's not an LLC so you can further target? So this is a way where I do a check to see if I find the LLC. This is the formula right here. And you can always do a Google search for Excel formulas, how to determine uh, text in a field. So basically, I'm looking for, I'm doing a string search for LLC in this field, and then I'm wrapping that with an is number check to see whether the value is a number. If the value is a number, that means it found the index in this text string where that exists. And then if that's the case, it says it's true or false. So some of you might be tech savvy and know how to build this out, but he's already built it for you. And some of you might not be so tech savvy and you might be doing this manually looking through. You could easily scroll through a list and see if it says LLC. But no, use technology. Use leverage. What he's ha going to hand you here in this Excel is going to save you minutes, hours, time, and allow you to be proficient so you can focus on the things that are important in your business. So he's taking what he's going to give you is basically time. He's saving you time. So this is huge. What other filters do you got here? Hot zip codes. This is really excellent for those of you that have a predetermined list of zip codes you love to hunt. So we've got a hot zip codes tab where you put in all of your favorite zip codes in whatever order you want. In this example, number one for me, in this example, 78211. These are my top 10 zip codes for this demonstration that I want to hunt. For, so for them to use this, they for the tab before this is how it, it pulls the data and shows you which ones are coming up in their yep. highest level uh, zip code. But they need to go to the tab next to put the actual zip codes that are important to them. And they need to put it in the sequential order of what's hot. If you want to put it in the sequential order, feel free to do that. This is like your configuration tab. Right. So remember, the, the zip code in the one row would be your hottest zip code. Mm -hmm. And then the zip code in 10 or even further than that mm -hmm. would be the bottom zip code. And, and, and you could add more down here because the yeah. way I've set up the formula, this is a multi-formula stack because you've got your mailing zip code over here from your list. Then we've got a formula called match, and match is going to look up all of, the, all of the columns in the A column right here. And notice that when you mouse over it, you get a little nice little tooltip from Google Docs that explains to you what this formula means. So I'm searching for the value in this cell in the list in this tab, and it tells me what the index is. This means this is my number 8 hot zip code. This is my number 10 hot zip code. If it doesn't find it, it throws up an error. 
uh, NA, which means not available, did not find, and it could not find 7207 in my list. If I added 7207 at the very bottom, 78207, and now that's my number 11, now look, it's no longer NA, now it's, well, the 11th fill. Well, 7207 is should have, I don't know why it's not showing, oh, probably because I didn't do uh, something on the page, it should show. It should show. <laughs> I don't know why it's not, because it's right there, you suckers. Anyway, doesn't matter. You can futz around with it. So, in, in either case, um, this is a uh, free Excel that he's going to give to you. This is how you can get it, okay? So, this is in Google Drive. This is in the cloud. Uh, Jason's going to share it with you, but this is how you get it. And I need everyone's help to be able to get this to more people. For you to get this Excel, I need for you to share this post. You're on Facebook right now, Facebook Live, you're watching it. I see you, Jeremy, Charlie, Keith, Jay, right now you're on this, and I have more, and there'll be others. Share this post, and when you share this post, tag me and tag Jason, and we will that'll notify us, and then we'll make sure to reach out to you and give you this Excel uh, so that you can have it and mm -hmm. utilize it for not just any, or not just tax delinquent, for any data list that you have. This is an Excel that's already pre-built with formulas that you can utilize right away. And I want to do a quick um, explanation of these other columns so you understand. Because this throws up an error, you want to have an error-safe column in which to do this analysis. So I have an extra column called if mirror error match. And what this does is uses the error function to try to detect, hey, did, did, was an error thrown up? And if so, let's replace the error code with a zero to tell me that nothing was found. So that way, all these NAs are now going to be zero. So this is the more important one than this. This is just showing you if you just did a match, you're going to get an index or an error. This is going to show you an index or the number zero. This is the magic formula for that. And then I take my final analysis. Is this a hot zip code, true or false? I am looking to see if this value is a non-zero amount. So I just say if and the value. And this intrinsically checks to see if it's zero or not. If it's so a, basically, is it one of my predetermined hot zip yep. codes or not? Or not. And that says true or false. Now I can take this true or false binary uh, value, create, you know, create my filter, and then I can simply say true, and this immediately filters out all the falses, and now I've got all the zip codes that are in my hot. Okay, there excellent. So, um, again, to get this free Excel, you need to share this post, Facebook Live. You can do this while you're watching live or on the replay and tag either myself or Jason or both of us so we can make sure to um, make sure to give you the information the, and the link to be able to get this Excel. And I appreciate everyone watching. Charlie had another question. So is it possible to find a potential cash buyer depending on how I target the list? Well, um, what's interesting is sometimes when you look at these LLCs, you're gonna notice wholesalers whose companies you recognize that are not paying their taxes. Oh, uh, and then this list. So maybe, maybe they want to sell their properties. So they might be cash buyers that simply, you know, forgot to manually make a payment sure. on, because it's not being escrowed by a mortgage company. They could potentially be a source, but tax delinquent lists are not your best way of finding cash buyers. Yeah, not the best way, but just like he showed you earlier, entity recognition, those LLCs, call them up and you can say, hey, do you buy in this area? I see you already own property. There's a chance it might take a little extra hard work, but yeah, all these right here, he's showing you right here, those might be potential cash buyers. Maybe not, but uh, potentially yes, and you never know unless you reach out to those people. We also have here, Keith said he sent you a friend request yesterday, Jason, so Keith's already ahead of the curve in, in, in connecting. Excellent. Milton said, Ch change the range of your zip code list. I think he already, he already took care of that. Well, the zip code the piece here, um, we're doing the columns, hot zip codes A to A. So that way I could add whatever I wanted, but I'll, I'll, I'll futz around with it. He's, he's got you. And then we have Elizabeth here. She says, follow Jason at Real Estate Nomads. He gives out tips from time to time. So he really takes some time to put out content like this one where he breaks down the data. He shows, he was talking about earlier in the video about narratives, kind of the stories, the patterns that he recognized through reviewing the data. And he shares that. He's a very giving individual. So... Obviously, this video um, is showing people how they can do this themselves, but not everybody has the time, the energy, or even wants to, or they're looking at ways that, hey, this might not be their strength, and they're trying to focus on the areas of their business where they can perform well, where they do have their strengths, and this is a weakness for them, and they'd rather work with somebody else or work uh, to have the list already kind of prepped for them. 
that's a service that you provide uh, that it, for any investor, right? And you already do it in not just Bear County, but in well, numerous counties. I have multiple clients throughout the country that I've um, done the service for. I just recently made this available to those when I realized that I can provide better value to the community than just being a wholesaler. I'm your tools guy. I'm your go-to automator specialist for any data you want mined. And I'm not looking to the reinvent the wheel that's already out there. You know, this is for new wheels. So if you want Houston area, Dallas area, um, pretty much any county in Texas or any county in any other state, uh, reach out to me and let me know what you're looking for. Uh, and typically what you need to do is provide me a list from your county. It doesn't matter how old the list is. So that I can take a look at the different data fields and then I can tell you which features my bot will be able to analyze for you. At a bare minimum, I can do the owner type analysis, possibly the owner occupancy analysis, maybe the years late and other things, but it really depends on how good your county is at providing data. So my recommendation to all the wholesalers out there and even investors, this is huge for investors as well. If you're looking to do a direct mail campaign or if you're looking to do skip tracing, and you're just looking to go after some really targeted leads, reach out to Jason. He's going to be able to, as you can see, and this is not even everything that he does, but as you can see, he has really taken the time to take a list and filter down and filter down and filter down and, and get it to its core to help investors use their money in a smart money fashion. So reach out to him. He can help you out, and he can give you a custom list specific for you that you can uh, then use, and what you will find is that it can produce over and over again because they're so highly targeted. Keith Harris says, great content with value. Thank you, Marco and Jason. Of course, thank you, Keith. Uh, he had a question for you, Jason. Do you handle Chicago Cook County, CCC? Get me a Cook County spreadsheet from the... From the county, and I'll tell you what I can do with it. So you need to contact the, their tax office and see if they'll even provide you the data. So basically, the answer is no matter what county you're in, if you go get the data for Jason, he's going to put his bots, his Excel, his you know data mine to it, and he will find out what are the good leads for you in that. As long as you get the data for him, if he's not already, if he already doesn't have a presence there, he already has a presence in numerous counties. So, yeah. uh, okay. How can people reach out to you, Jason? So let's say somebody's watching. They're like, this is badass. I love what I'm seeing. I think this is great. I want to do a direct mail campaign to highly targeted leads so I can use my money in a smart way. Mm -hmm. How could they reach out to you? So three ways. Uh, first, I recommend you uh, follow and like our page, Real Estate Nomads, because I drop information on there that can help you with regular things. Uh, two, you can add me on Facebook. Jason Brown 11 is my Facebook ID. Uh, at some point, I'll be maxed out on friends. You can always just send me a direct message, and then I check my message requests uh, regularly to see uh, if people have any um, requests. And then my email is jason at brownstonehs.com. So those are the three ways. Uh, if I don't get back to you within 24 hours, it's because I'm swamped catching up with other clients and I'm working on other things or I'm in meetings, but I do my best to be as uh, prompt as I can be. Or you might be traveling. Or I'm you traveling. Might be in a dead zone. Because, you know, we travel all over the country and I work remotely. The world. Yeah, all over the world. So right now we're Airbnb in Canada, just over the border. And I'm flying back out there in about a week. And so uh, sometimes I have the iffy internet connection. Okay, so uh, I see Mike jumping in here. It, it was great seeing you uh, the other day. Colin, also great seeing you at the event. Angel, thank you for watching. Mm. Make sure to go back and watch the beginning. There's a lot of high value in here, but we are giving a free Excel away to everyone that shares this Facebook video and tags Jason and myself so that we can see that you shared it. Jason is then going to give you the link to this free Excel with these uh, great filters that you can use on any data set. Now, we're wrapping up this video, but actually we're going to be back doing another Facebook Live on Monday, right about 11.30. So mark your calendars, 11.30 this upcoming Monday. And let's give a quick sneak peek about the topic that we're going to discuss then. What are we going to talk about on Monday? So on Monday we're going to be talking about team and self-accountability tracking. How you can... Take your business to the next level by staying focused on important metrics, hustle activities like banded signs, door knocking, cold calls, how to know if you're on track or off track with your, uh, with your goals, tracking your leads in the life cycle from new lead to under contract to sold. For those of you that don't want a CRM or are intimidated by Podio and you would like a Google Sheet, 
has a quick and dirty way just to track the basics of all your deal flow, I've got that we're going to talk about. Can you, can you do a quick show of what you got here? So this is... Um, 30 seconds on it. Okay, well, well, quick 30 seconds. Oh, I don't have the sheet up. You don't have it? Uh, but uh, I do have... Um, you know, we're going to so, be going over different types of activities. So right here, you got go back. You have bandit signs. You have cold calling. You have a bunch of different. So sources. we have we, we have hustle activities. I'm going to teach you teach you how to create drop downs, data validation, so you don't have to type it in. You can just select when you're putting in your teammate in here, like Tim, and you want him to track uh, some type of uh, activity. So Dwight is going to be doing some door knocking, and you have a target of 200 for him for the first two weeks of the month. And maybe he got to 255 or 250. This will immediately tell you, hey, you met your target and you had a surplus of 50. Or if you were slacking and you only did 240, you know, two, uh, 199, false, you're off by one. So we're going to go over those sorts of things. So this is huge. We're going to talk about it more on Monday. The reason this is critical and important is for a number of reasons. And this is important for you, especially if you're just starting out or you feel like you've hit some sort of ceiling. Like you've hit your cap and doesn't matter whatever you do, for some reason you can't get to the next level. I will tell you hands down right now that it is likely tied to your accountability and your reporting. So you need to be knowledgeable about how many, um, how many different lead sources you're going after and how many actionable items that you are doing on a consistent basis, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly and identifying whether or not you're achieving your goals or you're under or overperforming and what is happening from a results standpoint because of that. Too many people will just buy a bunch of bandit signs and they just put them out and then that's it and they're hoping for a phone call and that's their measure of success is if they got a phone call. That is not proper tracking. For you to be uh, knowledgeable about what you need to be doing and what you need to be increasing to eventually get more deals, you have to be looking at the numbers. And this is what we're going to go on, uh, go into detail with on Monday using analytics, using Excel spreadsheets, and using numbers to determine what's working and what's not working. So mark your calendar, Monday, 1130, we're going to go over it. Make sure to reach out to Jason if you are interested in these very highly specialized targeted lists. And again, to get that free Excel where you're going to get some of Jason's filters and formulas for free, make sure to share this video and tag myself and Jason in the post, and we will make sure to get you that free Excel. Thank you for watching, everybody. Enjoy Thank the rest guys. of your day. Peace.